Hey guys, Mr. Abyss here with Life is a Shonen. If you're enjoying the content on our channel, go ahead and like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to go ahead and get updates whenever we put out a new video, go ahead and click that little bell down there as well. Enjoy! Hey guys, welcome back this week. It's time for us to cover chapter 186 of My Hero Academia. Uh, this is continuing the video series where we go back and cover a story arc a few arcs before what's currently going on in the manga. Because, in my opinion, best arc. I said in the other videos, still stand by it. I love it so much. Though I will say the Shigaraki backstory right now is getting pretty darn good. But let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we open up this chapter, chapter 186, with a scene of a man standing in front of a bunch of probably workplace buildings. People seem to be going about their daily lives. He's muttering to himself. You learn that ever since he was old enough to really know what was going on, he's had a sensitive ability to read people's facial expressions, and he has to center himself. He says it's suffocating. Uh, you're going to find out why he's saying this. He has a very odd superpower. We actually uh, had a discussion with Albert 3G, if y'all watch the high T videos, he's in the high T videos, uh, about what really, like, this quirk's kind of limited. So, before I get into what the quirk is, he's standing in front of the building and he's cursing out a company. I assume he used to work for them. He does say my company. I don't know if he means that because he owned it or he's just associated with it. Whatever. He says he put them through hell and for now he will be liberated. So what he does is he pulls open his trench coat and he's nude underneath it and flashes the entire crowd. Explains his, uh, explains his quirk. It's called shame. His name is Teruo Hazukashi, by the way. The more embarrassed he becomes, the more powerful he gets. So that makes sense to why he's flashing his genitals. To everyone in the area. But what Albert said you brought up was eventually, you, since it's based off of your own embarrassment, you just have to keep doing like like dirtier and dirtier and nastier things to keep on embarrassing yourself. Because eventually, if you do it enough, no matter what, you're going to get used to it. So he has a very if you use properly, very powerful skill, but if you use too much, it's worthless. <laughs> Though, like a second after he's flashing himself, before he can even do anything, a few of Hawk's feathers fly by and just destroy the guy. He's knocked to the ground. Uh, you get a front view of him, but the feathers are blocking his genitals. So, glad we don't have to see that. I'm sure it was kind of weird. And he continues on talking to Endeavor, wondering uh, what's his favorite food. He's pretty much just trying to get... He's trying to, uh, I guess, have Endeavor lower his guard. Uh, so far, when they've been interacting with each other, and he still like it throughout the entire... Uh, throughout the entire chapter, it's the same exact way. But, I think that's what Hawk's trying to do. It's going to be hard for Hawk to uh, discuss with Endeavor what he wants to, if Endeavor is so aggressive about every single thing and every single intention that Hawks might have. Uh, while they're walking through the city, all these events are occurring around them, and Hawks is just casually deal with it, dealing with it. And his feathers are pretty... I'm not really sure how much he has to think about it, but he controls each and every feather uh, separately. It's kind of like Byakuya's Bankai, when he would have Simba Zakura. It's like a nerfed version of that, with more, like, uses, I guess. And the people are noticing that this is Hawks that's actually doing all these good deeds around the city so nonchalantly. And he, uh, he starts to get a lot of people that are crowding around him, really giving him a bunch of attention. You're seeing how much, how different the crowd reaction is to Hawks being in the city versus Endeavor. I mean, it's very, very blatant. The people are in love with Hawks. They want to interact with him. They want to talk to him. They want to interact with him. They want to learn about him. They want him to know their names. And Endeavor's kind of watching, pouting a little bit. This is the first, like, hint you get of Endeavor realizing, like, he's nothing like All Might was or even, like, what the number two hero's like. And I think that's where he's getting to start realizing that he himself has to grow. The very first seed, I think. Uh, you do get a few kids, though, that do want his autograph, but the fact that he's so scary keeps them away from ever asking him. Uh, you have a funny scene where Endeavor notices this, and he's making funny eyes. And uh, he turns to them to try to act like the cool hero and says, Hey, guys, you don't have to worry about anything. You can ask me anytime you want. And one of the children actually gets upset and doesn't want his autograph anymore because he thought Endeavor was cool because he never wanted to give his autograph. So now Endeavor is lame to this character. It's almost like Endeavor just can't do anything right. So uh, in the next scenes, we flash into the inside of an apartment. And inside of it are still Hawks and Endeavor having a discussion with each other over some food. Uh, I think Hawks has really succeeded here finally in what he was trying to do in getting Endeavor to lower his guard. They're having a more civil conversation. They're discussing... Uh, 
how Hawks originally tried to get Shoto to be his, uh, not underling, or I guess not his page or surf. I forgot what the word would be. To be his, uh, no, to be his apprentice during whatever arc that was in. Uh, he actually ended up with Tokoyami, his superhero name being Sukuyomi. For a moment, I forgot that while I was reading it, and I was really trying to figure out who who is Sukuyomi. He kind of makes a, throws a little bit of shade in Endeavor's way and says, but he's kind of glad that he did end up with Tokoyami because Shoto had failed the provisional license exam, and his name would have damaged Hawk's brand, which really pisses off Endeavor, and we're almost right back to where we were, but he, you kind of, Hawks reminds Endeavor this is just what he's like. He kind of trolls people. Uh, but at this point, Endeavor's had enough, and he said, okay, let's go ahead and talk business. I know why you're here, and why do you want to talk to me about it? It's the modified humans, the Nomu. They go over that dozens of them were being stored in Kamino when All for One did his attack, which were all captured along with All for One. Ever since then, although the League has been quite active, there have yet to be any confirmed other attacks by Nomu. You know, remember that the heroes are not aware at all of the, uh, the black market that goes on beneath the scenes where Shigaraki was getting all of his Nomu from, that scientist doctor guy. And rumors have been going around, although nothing's been concrete and found. Every city has these little whispers of the Nomu. It's like the name won't die even though nothing's going on, so it's hard for Hawks to really give up the idea that the Nomu aren't a threat because the name won't disappear. You would think, I mean, these things aren't the boogeyman. People saw what they were and they saw All Might take them down, so they know they can be beaten, but it's just odd that it won't go away. What Hawks is worried about is even if they aren't real, if someone's trying to go around and spread anxiety to everyone in the city, the effect is already starting to happen. There are places in small towns where people don't know what's going on, that probably don't deal with superheroes, that saw and heard about what happened with the Nomu, and it's starting to pass around maybe a little bit like uh, Urban Legend. So maybe that's what's happening. Now, here's an interesting panel, because I had no idea this thing was even mentioned. So they bring up the villain from earlier, the guy that flashed himself and had that uh, embarrassment quirk. He was shouting Banzai for the emancipation of superpowers. Uh, if you haven't read up in the manga right now, go ahead, mute the audio for the next like 30 seconds. But they're referencing the arc that's going around right now and the fight with Shigaraki and that long-nosed guy that's running the Liberation Force. This is the first uh, time the thing had ever been mentioned. I had, did not remember this at all. I think it's pretty cool that Horikoshi put this little tidbit in there. So it made it really not an ass pull at all later on when you introduced these, this group. Really, really good. Uh, it adds to my faith in Horikoshi. So eventually Hawks does get down to it. And what he says is, pretty much, Evan Endeavor, I want you to be about as good of a number one hero as you can possibly be. Because Hawks doesn't want to be in the limelight like that. He envisions a world one day that's so free of the violence and so free of villains that heroes don't even have jobs anymore. There can only be so few of them because there's just not enough stuff to go around. There's not as much crime, which should probably be the wish of all heroes. It's it's Endeavor, like I said before, learning how to be a hero from Hawks. And I love it. It's what makes this arc so good because right after this, because right after this, right after he gives the speech about how he wants the world to be a place where heroes have more free time than they know what to do with, Endeavor's like musing on it for a moment. And he notices something in the window. And you see this little speck with like, I can't tell if it's a cloud or just air moving behind it. And uh, he completely stops paying attention to Hawks. And Hawks notices this and turns around, sees the same thing as Endeavor, and, and calls his name out. He says Endeavor. And he notices something's flying at them. And you get the zoom up of what it actually is. It's this, this big winged Nomu. With a, it's not the same face at all as the old Nomu. You remember he had those weird teeth and a large face and his brain was out? This one's just got like a... The back of like a Spinosaur, a very bony reptilian back with bat wings, like white hair. I don't know if that's hair or if that's air being pushed forth. But it's flying very fast. It's almost got the face of Kur... Maybe it is Kurigiri. Maybe that's what happened. I don't know. Uh, but it has that face of Kurigiri, like that Warpgate face. And this is right when the woman walks in and asks for the check, and they scream to her to get down. Because this thing is going right at them, and it crashes through the window. And the moment it hits the floor, it looks up and, oh, you, you can't see its brain. But it looks up and asks them which one is the strongest. Remember, 
beasts. Before this happened, no normal had ever said a word. They were mindless, just beasts to be controlled. And Deborah screams for Hawk to evacuate the building. To which Hawk says, Roger, I got it. We'll take care of the people. But what are you going to do? But without talking, without telling him what he's going to do, he says it looks like it was more than just a rumor. And this is fortuitous timing on our part. And you get this next badass scene where Endeavor pulls back his arm, catches his flame, or really turns his flame on bright, and says, brilliant scorching fist, jet burn. And you get, it almost looks like a laser, a concentrated flame blast that goes, like, through the Nomu. Now, a lot of mangas do this where it shows the blast go through them, but not, like, through them. I'm not really sure what's going on, but it always means a lot of damage has occurred. And he says to the beast as he's flying through the air with the fire, spraying out of his legs like a badass, he says, come. I will show you what it means to be number one. And that is the end of issue 186. Things really pick up now. Uh, Next week when I do 187, that's when things really start to go down. And you get the best fight in all of my hero. By far incomparable to nothing else that has come before and after just yet. We'll see you next week. Hope you enjoyed it.